Okay. So um, on the next page, we're going to find the average value. This is just if you are given any standard problem. So this is just practicing using the formula. So the average value problem is written like this, and this is equal to 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Okay, so you have to know the formula. Okay, non-calculator. This is what we're going to do. Um, I notice I have the natural log and I have e. It's fine. Okay, we're going to get it as simplified as we can and then just leave it. If it was a calculator portion, then it would tell you how far on the decimal they want you to take it out. If they don't, then you're going to truncate at 4. Okay? All right, so let's do our setup. So our average value is equal to 1 over the natural log of 5 minus a negative 1 becomes plus times the integral from negative 1 to the natural log of 5 of e to the x dx. Now, before people even think about it, they go into a full-on panic mode. I don't know what the natural log of 5 is. I, so, I don't either. But can you integrate e to the x? Sure you can. Okay, do you know what this is? No? So guess what? You just leave it as a fraction. It's totally fine. 1 over the natural log of 5 plus 1 times what is the integral of e to the x? It's e to the x. Okay, to be evaluated from negative 1 to the natural log of 5... And now we'll do the best that we can, okay? So again, 1 over the natural log of 5 plus 1 times, this becomes e to the ln of 5 minus e to the negative first power, okay? We can do a little bit of simplifying, but for the most part, this answer is going to be a complex fraction without a calculator. What is the value of e to the natural log of 5? Five. Five. Ah, it's just 5. Okay, so this is 5 minus 1 over e right, or e to the negative first, isn't this all in the numerator? Okay, so then you just write it as one fraction. So this is 5, and you can either write this as minus 1 over e or e to the negative first, natural log of 5 plus 1. That's it. That's all you can do. And what we're saying is that is our average value. That is the height, okay, to find the area under the curve. Take a look at B. Find the average value. Okay, what's the first part of my setup? One over the width. One over. Yep. Okay, and then what? The integral. Well, you're integrating in your head and not writing down what the setup is. So it's negative one half to zero of one over the square root of one minus x squared dx. So yes, this is the inverse sine, but I needed all this first. What is this? What's the value? Two. So this is two times the inverse sine of x to be evaluated from negative one half to zero. Okay. Two times. What's the inverse sine of zero? Zero. Minus, what's the inverse sine of negative one half? Ooh. That is right. Negative <coughs> pi over six. Okay, here's my question. Uh, what are the domain restrictions for inverse sine and inverse tangent? Yeah, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. What's the only difference between inverse sine and inverse tangent? Yeah, asymptotes for pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, so those values are not included for inverse tangent. I'm asking you this because it's important. You need to remember. Okay, I know that probably for some of us was not our most favorite unit in pre-calc. Okay, but, I mean, it is something that we have to remember. Okay, so that may, gives me a value of what, pi over 3? Okay, done. That's the height. Okay, so this is just the math, right? Just the math. So when am I really going to use this? Um, if you buy a yacht. 
Uh, if you, it, well, what happens when you buy a car? Like, let's say a brand new car. As soon as you drive it off a lot, what happens? Oh, goodness, yeah. It's not even worth what you paid for it, right? Not even close. As soon as you drive it off the lot. All right, so this is what they're saying here. Suppose that the value of a yacht, which I'm not driving off the lot. I just, I wouldn't buy a yacht. Uh, in dollars, after T years of use, is given by the following function, V of T, capital V. Now, here's the deal. This is not a velocity function. It's just V of T. All right, so... They want to know what is the average value of the yacht, meaning after it depreciates over 10 years, what's it going to be worth? That's the average value. Because what typically happens the first, we're going to use the car as an example, that first moment as you drive it off, it goes like this, but then it kind of evens out a little bit, right? So what they're trying to do is take the average over 10 years and kind of say, okay, per year, this is approximately how much. Even though we know what happens in that first year, it's a huge drop. They're saying, what is the average? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Okay, so we're going to do the setup here, and I actually don't have my calculator, so let me grab that. You do need a calculator for this. Okay, so our setup, which is something that I would be looking for, would be 1 over uh, 10 minus 0. My integral is from 0 to 10. And here is something I want to point out. If this is an FRQ, let's say, on a test or on the AP or wherever, do you have to write the whole function over again? No. They have already um, identified what it is and defined it for you, so you can just write V of T dt. Okay. That is your setup. Now, all they care about is the answer. So I'm going to go into Y equals and type this in which, oh look, I already did. And then I'm going to go to the home screen. And I'm going to type in exactly what I see. Okay, so we've got our fraction, 1 over 10 times the integral from 0 to 10. And I put mine in y sub 1, so I'm going to go in and grab y sub 1 and integrate with respect to x. So, you need to make sure your answer makes sense. If you made a typo somewhere, okay, which happens, I did it yesterday, instead of negative 4.9 t squared, I typed in negative 49.t squared, and it messed up my entire graph. Okay, I'm going to press enter. Now, I bought this at $275,000. It is now, after 10 years, worth approximately 132,212.96 cents, 95 cents. Does that make sense? Okay. If you get a bigger number, there's a mistake somewhere. So make sure your answer makes sense. So this is your answer. And also, too, folks, remember this is money. Don't give me those four decimals. Okay, so make sure your answer makes sense. Okay, does anyone have any questions on that average value problem? Okay, do me a favor. You are asked two questions about example four. I'm going to give you a couple minutes so that you can complete it, and then we will review it together.
take a look. Uh, this is not the value of the area. I'm saying the area. This is section one, two, and three. Okay, I had someone say to me that this area was not three or one or whatever. I labeled it yesterday, and I'm like, I, yeah, thanks. Um, okay, so the area for this region one, which is a uh, triangle, what is it? One. Okay, what about this two? One. What about three? Ooh, careful. Six, because it starts at one, not at zero. So you have to be careful. So it's six. So this total area under the curve from one to seven is eight. Okay, that's why I wanted to review. Okay, now we need to determine the average value over the given interval. So can someone give me the setup? If I asked you for the setup, what would it be? One over seven minus one. One to seven of f of x dx. Okay, we already know what this is. We calculated it, right? So this is essentially one over six times eight, which is what, four thirds? It's the average value. 